Now here we are, we're going to pour concrete here and uh, we put the gravel in. Gravel is always a good base. I always preach that uh, that's the best thing to do because you see gravel on the railroad tracks. You always pitch your forms and everything away from the building and where you want the water to go. Then I got the line up, I measured my distance for the concrete. Yeah. Concrete right where the water's running down the pitch. I always go a little lower than the fourth, and that is because uh, concrete bows like this. You're watching one of those big warehouses like Home Depot. Now you see where the joints are, it bowed up. So that's just a little thing I do. I'm doing my edges. This is my big long trawl. And I, uh, this is I know I'm right when I go over it with this. If any holes or anything I can see it with this trowel. And then I take my little trowel and go over the top of that. And that's my finish. Just floating it. This is different than broom. Just let it lay there and you kind of push it. Let it float on top. That's why they call it a float finish. And you do this to it. And it'll reveal to you all the low spots and high spots when you're doing concrete. And just let it flow. The problem with concrete is the time thing. And you have to keep doing it until you get it the right time to finish it. That's our my finished product right there. Okay, we'll put our edge marks in. Just like that. 
but we're gonna let's trowel over them a little bit and not show them because we're gonna come back and cut this and it'll clash with that. And that's our our flow finish. Of course you could go put your swirls in like that. It's different style, whatever you want to do. Take the forms out, there's little pot holes. And we get a little Portland and a little sand, and we just fill those holes in like that. In case they show. And then we just get our sponge and water and just flatten them out. Fills the